This conference will now be recorded. <laughs> um, looks to me like on uh, most issues, like the issues you were talking about last week, there there really isn't any time limit on on that. You know, I mean, you can revisit it again, you know, whenever you want. And where you do get into issues, you know, uh, like if you're, um, these are just some examples. You know, if you have a situation where oh, you'll see somebody's voting on a referendum, you know, for a new school or something like that, and it fails, then Sometimes you can't bring it back for so long after. I think uh, when you go from, uh, uh, like when you increase, you know, when, when you, uh, uh, like the issue with the number of board of supervisors, things like that, you know, once you consider that issue, you know, a lot of times you can't consider it for so long after that. So um, what we're dealing with here. So I just wanted to let you, I told you I'd follow up with it and I did. Um, the only other thing I'll talk about is, uh, you know, I, I think it was last week when we were talking about the Kephart situation and uh, you know, similar type situations. Um, and um, uh, anyway, I was down in Des Moines uh, last Friday. I went down there to a meeting government practice. I wanted to go anyway, just because I wanted to, uh, you know, there's a lot of people down, you know, with the attorney general's office, other county attorneys and things. Some of them I, over the course of my time here, I met, you know, over the years. Some of them I hadn't because they're relatively new. So I want to go down there and meet them, put a face. So when we're talking on the phone or email and kind of know who each other are. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But I did uh, talk to uh, uh, a couple of people down there, you know, about uh, uh, these kind of issues with nuisance and find out if, if, if somebody's doing something differently than, than we are. It doesn't sound like they are. They did point me, they it, it, they pointed to me some good resources, some articles I want to read, um, you know, that are recent that might share some insight on it. Um, so I, they, they hadn't read them yet. You know, they just said, well, I came across this. I don't know what it says. So I'm going to sit down and read those and just, tr you know, try and see, just let you know, I told you I was going to do some research into it and I am. Uh, so I just wanted to follow up with that and I guess I don't necessarily have anything else unless somebody else uh, has something. Anybody have any questions? No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Good morning. Good morning. Just a few things for you. Our summer events are starting. So this weekend, for, yeah, Saturday, we'll have a marathon coming from Minnesota. Uh, into Mitchell County and then I think into Riceville. Um, actually, the uh, coordinator of the event is from Riceville, but they start the marathon in Leroy, I think it is. So, 100 and some runners will have a couple of deputies out to assist them with that. So, those are getting started. The other thing that I got a question for, for the board is um, I'm getting emails from sheriffs across the state on the carbon capture pipeline and how eminent domain is being used to allow surveyors onto private property without landowners uh, permission. They cite 479B15 of the Iowa Code, and maybe Aaron can talk to uh, us about that. But have you guys had any complaints from landowners in your districts? Not yet. I haven't seen a map that, that shows this carbon capture pipeline coming through Mitchell County. And you guys I think it was. I thought it was going south of us. So if it stays south, we won't have any issues. Um, and let's hope that that is the case because there are issues across the state with these surveyor companies um, essentially using that code section to get on private property to survey land. And so it's becoming an issue. And so if the map and that pipeline doesn't come our way, we won't have any issues. Uh, and so that would be my hope. Yeah. That's really all I have. Um, for you guys this morning, so unless you have something for me. I had one couple of people calling about uh, people going around trying to sell insurance at night. Yes. You heard about that? Yes. Yeah, they were out um, South Carpenter last week, 9 p.m., South Dakota plated truck. I think they're out of the area now. They've been refused so many times. Um, if there's any uh, silver lining to social media, stuff like that can get out pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, social media is a waste of time. <laughs> so we haven't had any complaints in a few days now, Mark. I think they are out in the area, but I took a few calls at home. I uh, never stopped like at nine o'clock and I uh, tried to sell this insurance. So yeah, we did have complaints.
things. Okay. Yeah. So, anybody else have anything for me? Happy to answer. Okay. Thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on. Item five discussion and action on mental health proclamation. Yes, I will read this. It's mental health and Ashley Z. Oh, you're, you're going to read it? Oh, you're going to read it? <laughs> okay. okay. Mental Health Month 2022 Proclamation Resolution 1126 22. It's 1127. Oh, so six. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, whereas mental health is essential to everyone's overall health and well being, and whereas all Americans experience times of difficulty and stress in their lives, and whereas prevention is an effective way to reduce the burden of mental health conditions, and whereas there is a strong body of research that supports specific tools that all Americans can use to better handle challenges and protect their health and well being, and whereas mental health conditions are real and relevant in our nation, and whereas with early and effective treatment, those individuals with mental health conditions can recover and lead full productive lives. And whereas each business, school, government agency, healthcare provider, organization, and citizen shares the burden of mental health problems and has a responsibility to promote mental wellness and support prevention efforts. Therefore, we, the Mitchell County Board of Supervisors, do hereby proclaim May 2022 as Mental Health Month in Mitchell County. As the Mitchell County Board of Supervisors, we also call upon the citizens, government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses, and schools in Mitchell County to, to recommit our community to increasing awareness and understanding of mental health. The steps our citizens can take to protect their mental health and the need for appropriate and accessible services for all people with mental health conditions. Past this third day of May 2022. So we need a motion and a second on this. I'll make a motion. Mark, Mark made a motion. I'll a second. Steve has seconded. Any further discussion on this? Roll call. Jim. Aye. Steve. Aye. Mike. Aye. Mark. Aye. Aye. Okay. Just say a few words. Sure. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, I'm Sheila Kabuska. I'm the program director of Psychiatric Intensive Outpatient Program at the hospital, Metro County Regional Health Center. Um, it's Senior Life Solutions. It's a, a psychiatric program for seniors struggling from depression or anxiety or different things like that. Uh, an absolutely wonderful program. It's changed lives of some of our elderly people. It, it, some have said it saved their lives. And um, Thank you on behalf of the hospital and psychiatric medical care and some other wonderful employees you have in Mitchell County. Mm -hmm. um, you have great advocates in this county to help people with mental health, to help them get what they need and provide information and that kind of stuff. I'm sure the majority of you have heard of Naomi Judd's death. And I, I love how her family announced it saying that she died from the illness, disease of mental health. And that's exactly what it is. It, it's a disease. It's health, just like physical health and any other kind of health. And I think for us, if we can get that word out, we, we've heard for years and years, break the stigma, break the stigma. And by doing that, people won't be embarrassed or afraid to seek help. Um, things have really changed over the years. And I think it's up to all of us to, to really get that word out because everyone's been touched by it in one way or another. Um, the count this month um, throughout the county, we're going to be having some various activities. On Friday, May 20th, we're going to have a walk for um, mental health awareness. It's for green that day. And I know that Justin with Public Health is getting something organized um, around the courthouse. And then other people who like to come to the hospital, we're also going to have a track. We're going to have sidewalk talk to put positive statements right along the sidewalk and that kind of thing. So please be aware of this problem and, and pandemic, you know, that we've had around our country for many, many years. And thank you so much again for signing this proclamation. I, 
I said I used to make proclamations where it's not just words, but it does help to bring awareness and, and start that conversation. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you two have anything to say? No? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Item six, department head discussion. Do you have anything on that? You want me to look up for elections? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. Yep. I have about $10,600 that we have to use for precinct officials. So I don't know what you want to do. We have 33 PEOs signed up right now. Yeah, I don't know. It was just brought to my attention that it had been that way for yeah. how many years? I think it, they're going to grab a picture with you if that's okay. With me? Yeah. <laughs> that means you got to get over there. Over where? Over there? We can go there. They okay, all go over there? Me or everybody? Sorry, guy. I think you'll look handsome. Yeah. Over there. You can get over there. It's my turn to be good. No, I Sorry. my arms are broken. Like, okay. you. For our company, we have to submit to that what we do during the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Prove that I was here. Okay. Yeah, let's go with you for many years. Yeah. You want to have a quick time? Like what? Don't decide what I got. Just because the resolution number is wrong, and that one. Okay. Okay. Ready? If I got blue, then cool. You want to look at here? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I told you that you did well. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, ladies, for what you do. Yeah. Yes. Thank you guys, too. Where do they put my stuff? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I don't know what you want to do. Uh -huh. but what do you guys think? Right now it's ten dollars an hour plus mileage. If you're to do a lump sum, I don't know if you still add mileage on top of it or how you want to figure it. Are you saying you need to amend the budget in order to if we have an increase in the wages? Is that what I would, you're saying? No, I don't need to. I have ten thousand six hundred dollars. If you do thought I did the math, yeah, thirty-three times I don't know, I just picked two hundred. We'd have enough money for that, but I don't know. I don't have a good number. Oh, it's like you're switch. I was trying to do something. But because how long a day is it? It's a 12 hour or? It's, you're open for, well, seven, it's from six o'clock to eight o'clock. You have to be there. Plus, then you have to close up and pick up a few things. 14, so you might as well figure at least, yeah, 15 hours. You're still a short people? I wouldn't mind having a couple more. We have enough to fill. How many is that? 33 currently. Well, what was what is your thoughts, Rachel? What is your I don't know. I didn't know if a like a lump sum if you promote it as a chunk of money versus ten dollars an hour, if that's more appealing to someone to come on a work or not. I think that would be one of our higher paid just due to the mileage that have to drive. Um is like two hundred and twenty dollars. So you don't. Some of them only make like one seventy, the one eighty or so. Some of them don't collect mileage at all. I don't know. How you figure number? Just, I know you checked with some other counties. Is there any? They're they're all above us. I think pretty much. Some do the same as us, and some do more than us. I don't know of any that are less than us. It was just brought to my attention yeah. by some people that are currently been doing it for years. And, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's like I said, nobody works for ten dollars an hour anymore. So, and we can wait till after the primary too and see if we want to switch it for the general or something. More time to think about it. 
uh, I would be in favor of raising it some, you know, I mean, because everything else is going up, you know. So those that are doing more than we are, they're giving a lump sum. Some do a lump sum and some just do a higher per hour. Some also pay over eight hours as overtime. That's what, seven hours of overtime? Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. If you do the bump sum, then you basically know how much you're spending right, right yeah. away. Yeah. Which would be kind of nice. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> like bigger and easy. Yeah. And I think you indicated that $250 would be a lump sum. I probably would not go quite that high. I'd maybe do 200. 200, okay. And then if you want to do mileage on top of it or. 200 with mileage on top. So now you're currently paying about 150, right? With a ten dollar an hour basically. Depending, yeah. Just because some don't take the mileage. There's a couple that don't like to get paid at all. So oh well. You find more though? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I know I know some people like to roll. Yeah. So which is good. Yep. Uh what's the consensus of the board on that? Uh, two hundred plus mileage. I think that sounds good. I think so too. I mean, I think it should it still be well under our budget. Maybe still have a good. Yeah. So you could bring that up, put on the next week's meeting, then agenda. To... Mm -hmm. Yep. I think it sounds reasonable. I mean, that's a long day. For mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, spring. You know. Agreed. It's usually that's retired good. people, you know, or. But, okay. Yep. All right. That sounds good. Yeah. I'm gonna start turning them away yeah. now. <laughs> I don't know about that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, there's something that I looked into in regards to some of the uh, businesses, I shouldn't say businesses, but I'll say entities in Mitchell County. They will uh, pay, I know for the CRC, they'll have, a, they won't pay for it, but they will allow the employee to have a membership to the CRC and be deducted from their, their paycheck. And uh, I'm just wondering if that could be tied with the wellness program and actually then the employee would say have a tax benefit because it would be pre-taxed, wouldn't be any cost to the uh, county and uh, in regards to wellness, more people. And it wouldn't be just for the CRC, it'd be, I guess my thought would be any fitness center in Mitchell County that would want to participate in, in doing that our employees could join it, have it deducted from their paycheck, possibly pre-tax, save a little money. So we do that with the CRC now, but they're switching and you now have to pay it on your own. Would that no, be no, you have you use a uh, um, it's called it's called e, uh, business ACH is what the is what it's called. Um, and if this happens, your office can call the CRC and they can explain that. But okay. that's what it's called. But it isn't, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I guess that's just something I looked into. Yeah, you in the past had a connection with the CRC. I just didn't remember how it was. You know, like again, I'm not tying it to the CRC either. There's other places that want to do it. Uh, I mean, people are going to want to do something in St. Ansgar. They're probably not going to want to come to Osage. And so I'm not just yeah. saying one business. So there's one in St. Ansgar. That's a fitness center. Yeah. yeah. So just a buy. Yeah. Can, can you do that pre tax? Um, stuff like that? I was thinking it was pre tax with some of the other ones. And, and that's where if if the wellness people, if it would be uh, maybe something that would be incorporated with the wellness program, it would be a benefit for our insurance company to see that, oh yeah, they have uh, 30 people that are going to a fitness center. And Lindsay just talked to me and said we box. don't do ACH. Okay. And why not? Okay. Maybe we can look into doing it. Look into it, you know? 
Aaron, is that something that can be pre-taxed? You know? Well, I'm sitting here thinking. I see you're looking up. Well, <laughs> it is like, um, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer off the top of my okay. head. I think I can figure. I mean, I can. Yeah. Jim. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll look. Okay. Is it I just don't know. Yeah. Okay. She's in charge of the wellness. I will do that. She's the chair. Yeah. She's the one that'll put her nose to the grindstone and figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I will do that. And something Aaron could look into, you know, too, and see if we. Yeah. I might, while I'm sitting here, I might okay. see yeah. if I can find a quick answer. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have anything? The department head discussion? Hearing, hearing done, I guess we'll move on to Rich. County engineer update. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're going to set a pre count, I think, this week for the Hickory project. I think it's on Thursday. I can't remember the exact time in my office because they want to start right away, uh, May 9th. Preliminary, we haven't had the pre count yet, so we don't really know all the details. But uh, those are the preliminary for the pre count will be this week. Um, I've got a letter drafted to send to, not send, but maybe drop off at the local residents in the town of Donnerville. They're going to be directly affected, so they'll have an idea of what's happening. But we won't probably do much until we get the exact information from the contract, as far as what they really plan on doing, because we need more discussion. But it sounds like the work will be from that, uh, uh, from the elevator south to the first street in town to get that part done first around the railroad tracks and get the flagger and stuff taken care of, and then in town traffic can can work their way out to the north. Um, in an effort to save costs early on in the project, uh, we volunteered to do the detour signing. So we're getting that organized a little bit. Since it's a short run, it's not a major highway. Mm -hmm. We're just going to route them on the gravel road west and walk around. So okay. we'll get some signage put up uh, for that. I don't have any other information on balsam as of yet. It's been kind of windy and rainy, so I don't have a, a definite timeline yet for their contractors, but it sounded like um, one contractor didn't want to come in until the other one's done, and I don't, so I'll get some more information over this week, so, but I don't have a timeline as to when the dirt works. I know they're cleaning stuff up out there, but we still got dirt work to do to get the bridge approaches in, so. Um, <clears throat> other than that, um, the agenda shows approval uh, possible action award for Stacyville Bridge, award for Stacyville Bridge, and then a resolution along the engineer signed contract. That's kind of one resolution, all in one. Um, like I said, I reviewed the the project last week on costs. Um, my engineer's estimate is two hundred seventy five thousand, based on unknown numbers of what these new box culvert sizes were going to be. Um, budgeted three hundred fifty thousand. The bid came in at three hundred ninety eight thousand three hundred forty six dollars and thirty cents, which I don't think we're going to if we if we avoid this or we if we don't award it, I don't think we're going to get better numbers next time. And we got to get it going because the uh, engineers wanted to either restrict it or close that bridge anyway. So I think we're better off just awarding the project and moving forward. And as right now, the the bridge funding does a lot for a little bit extra in it um, and our HBP funds. So um, at this point in time, we're okay with uh, our funding. So I'd recommend we award the project to <clears throat> Peterson contractors um, based on this resolution. Okay. Any other bidders? There were, but it's all DOT. It's all DOT uh, that, and they were the lowest responsive, responsible bidder. We had a total of five bidders. Uh, the highest bid was 473,000. Lowest bid was 398,000. So with that many bid bidders, we it was competitive. You're right, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we're looking for a motion and a second for resolution 1127-22. 28. 28. It says 27 on the sheet. Yeah, the number was off. Anyways, okay. I'll move to approve resolution 1128-22 for approving the 
box culvert on Monument Avenue and for the county engineer to authorize to sign contract documents and dot express. Yeah, you want to say that? Rick? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's fine. It's just that the, the you're awarding the project and then you're allowing me to receive necessary contract documents, including but not limited to the contractor's bond certificate of insurance that I be allowed to designate, authorize, and be empowered on behalf of the board um, to execute the contracts in Lock Express for the county. So it's in the resolution, just kind of paraphrasing. But nothing we haven't done in the past with projects with Lock Express. Next, Steve has made a motion. Looking for a second. Second. Didn't second that. Any further discussion on this? Roll call. Mark. Right. Mike. Hi. Steve. Hi. Right. Jim. Hi. Dad. Hi. Okay. And if Mike, you want to sign that? Yeah. This one? And then Rachel will just walk to the valve down on it. She'll get you. She'll, 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 she'll get modified. Um, other than that, I'm still reviewing the Rock Run maps. Um, I know you guys have all received an email over the weekend. Yes. Um, what do you think of that? I think it's a large rock. You know, it's a large size. Um, currently, right now, the rock run includes 15 miles of Level B roads um, at 3,750 tons for those miles total combined. Some of these Level B roads look like they're going to get 300 tons. There's actually one that's going to get 400 tons a mile on a Level B, mm -hmm. which I don't know how. Uh, we've always kind of just done Level Bs as part of the route. Do we want to minimize how much we put on level Bs? They're supposed to be minimum maintenance roads and not class A roads. Um, in addition, the email that was sent out, um, that road, according to the operator's route, doesn't isn't included in the rock run this year. Apparently, the operator doesn't feel it needs to be done. I haven't looked at it. Um, and if we so choose to do something different, we can rock it on our own and not include it into the rock run because the request is for a different size aggregate, which we normally don't quote out. So um, the rock run this year, we're still looking at the Dinchin and Eighth and the Southeast Corner because that Southeast Corner just has really odd soils. Um, the rest of it, we're looking at our regular rock. You know, last year, things got changed. Um, I didn't care for the clean rock. I don't know that it tied down that well. In some spots, it kind of did, but it's still a lot of loose rock and we're still fighting washboarding on that. On those roads, but um, if we're going to change something, I'd like to know now before we send it out. The, the operator just yesterday that we did that too, and he thought it was working excellent getting it mixed in. Because last year we had two things against us dry summer, and the one route went 300 ton, but the route that went 200 ton, that worked, he thought it was. So a lower, maybe a lower tonnage on that rock. But yep. what did we put down? We put down a, a clean rock, didn't we? I think it was in screen. Screen. <clears throat> so do we want to change our rock run to inch screened all the way around the county or I don't. I mean, I've handed out the documentation from all the research the state's done on granular roads, and I understand that we've got a lot of fines in the roads, but we don't have a gradation of fines. We've got a lot of small fines that don't mix in well with everything else. And um, I, I'll repeat myself, and I repeat it every year. The problem is we can't get enough rock on the roads to do us any good. We're putting three and four hundred tons of mile on there, which doesn't even give us uh, an inch of rock per mile on a surface when the top size aggregates close to an inch. You don't get enough to bind in and lock in to do us any good putting clean rock on or a screened rock, it, it can help in some situations, but we're still we're still washboarding. I'm driving some of those roads, they're still washboarding at intersections, even though we're continuing blading and we've had moisture, we've had traffic on them. It's not tying in the grade, greatest, but I'm sure the operators like it because they've got something to work with and move around, but when it starts drying out, that rock stays on top and breaks down. It doesn't bind in very well. But in the past, um, we recommended certain aggregate gradations to run the rock run and, and nobody's cared for it. So if you guys want to change something, let me know. 
because the only thing I can see we do is cut down our miles and add more rock, but that doesn't solve our problems either. Clean rock creates safety hazard because it works just fine when you're under 30 mile an hour. If you start going faster than that, it's like people are driving, on marbles. driving on marbles. Uh, there's a braking problem as far as the safety hazard plus controllability plus windshields. It picks that rock up and throws it around a lot more. So, uh, yeah, the operators like to move it around because it's easy to, to work with. But as far as the, the public driving on it at 50 mile an hour, it's not a good deal. In some of those spots where we put the inch screen down because we've had high traffic volumes, it's kind of pounded in a little bit better, but we don't have high traffic volumes on all that. And that bridge project on Balsam has changed some of that traffic pattern until the hot, you know, until it gets open back up. So there have been locations where it has been pounded into the base a little bit, but we still have a lot of washboarding issues that I'm noticing in some of those spots. And I'm not saying it's not in other places in the county, I'm just seeing it exaggerated in those locations. But I want to know what we're going to do before I send this quote out so we're not changing something after the fact. So um, I think we're fine with the inch and a quarter or the inch and an eighth down in the southeast corner because we still struggle with with the bases in those roads down there but that's an awfully big rock and I know that we've tried that inch and an eighth in other locations and I've gotten phone calls and blown tires and so now we're talking about in the email trying to add something a little bit bigger to a road now that road doesn't serve a lot of public as far as trip on the road that was requested um mostly truck traffic it's mostly truck traffic with one resident on it who <clears throat> is the one requesting it but it is still a public road that anybody can drive on and that's a big aggregate now it's not unheard of to have that in in certain situations and if they're going to have that kind of truck traffic but i don't know if that truck traffic is yearly or the seasonal so in the seasonal traffic, we're gonna have that big rock up there, but after that, is it gonna is it gonna be causing a problem later? We can try it. I mean, if it's got some fines in it, it needs to bind in. The thing that people don't understand is a gravel road shouldn't have loose rock on it. It should be bound tight and create a hard surface for two reasons. One, you get aggregate interlock so you can transfer the loads, and then you don't have the rock rolling around creating the dust, which everybody complains about too. If you've got loose rock, it's not doing anything for you on the surface until you get enough moisture where you can actually kind of work it into the base. Otherwise, it just sits there and breaks down and creates dust. But to I, move a million bushel of grain, that takes more than a couple of months to move that much. Sure. No, I'm not arguing that over there on the grain side that it's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's a low traffic road as far as who's potentially using it. Um, <laughs> I should I don't I didn't look at the traffic count on it, but just knowing that there's one house and and two grain sites on it, you know, I'm not opposed to trying it as long as it's not clean rock on that stretch. I don't know how bad that roads are over there. Was... That one I don't know. I think we've we've there's been some we've been putting rock on it, spotting it as occasionally because the traffic has increased on it from the farming practices, you know, from farming it's gotten more farm traffic on it. But but I think we'll keep that aside from the regular rock run and not introduce that into our into our system there. Kind of monitor the situation and see. How right, but I want to know if we're if we're okay with using our standard gradation again, or we're going to try to change something else on the rock run. Would it be possible to put on yeah, for a price for both regular road rock and inch screening? We can. We can do that. So. Mark had said that he talked to somebody on grading and he likes it. Could could we reach out to some more of the greater operators and just kind of get a feel on how the rest of them? I mean, if we just, for instance, if we put down what this individual wants. I don't want to start being an a la carte county where everybody chooses what they want to put no, down. No, but we could take uh, the majority of I mean, that's kind of what we're, I base a lot of my decisions on is if sure. uh, you know, nine guys like this and two guys like that, well, excuse me, but sorry guys, but I think we're, you know, if we're getting nine operators liking this rock 
and it works for them. I mean, you see what I'm saying? So my it's goal kind of the, as the engineer is to make sure we get a quality rock that binds in and stays put and not rolls around. And, and right now we have a lot of fines. There's no doubt about it. There are a lot of fines on every gravel road in the state of Iowa and Minnesota. Um, I'm not opposed to you guys reaching out. They're gonna they're gonna want cleaner rock because that's all they ever want is clean rock. Um, but clean rock doesn't bind in. And I don't know, Jim, if you wanna argue with me a little bit on whether it does or doesn't. But no, I'm, I'm not gonna argue with because I agree with you. But we, we've um, fought that for a year. We've been fighting. I think counties fight this every year, not just Mitchell County, not Worth County. Every county seems to fight some conceived notion that fines are bad. And Certain fines can be bad, excessive fines can be bad. The problem is, and I'll repeat it again, we can't afford to put enough on the roads to make the rock do what it needs to do. I sent you guys, I sent you a spreadsheet out last year. I gave you guys all that before the rock run last year. And the expense of maintaining ground mm -hmm. roads um, with rock to, to, to do what it needs to do is it, with as many miles as we have, it's, it's, it's a losing, it's a, it's a tough battle to win. But yeah, we can get quotes on, on the one inch screened, see what that costs, compare it to our next standard road rock. And we'll leave that other, uh, other road that was requested off the rock run and do that on our own. If, the, if, 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 the, if the operators want to clean a rock on the roads, then they had not better grumble when they're out blading a lot mm -hmm. because Cleaner rock requires to be out there maintaining it a lot more. So I don't want to hear any complaints that all we're doing is blading because well, in the and, past too. Yeah, and then uh, the, the key is to not just move the stuff around, but actually mix it in with the existing base. It means cutting, cutting what? the base and getting everything worked in. But if it's clean, it reaches a point you can't make that happen. Sure. And then it gets washboardy yep. and, and bridged up. And then that's when it becomes a traffic problem. So then you need to go relay re-level it around because it's all bunched up. I encourage you to read the research stuff I gave you last year. I mean, there's a reason they use class A rock, but they also have, you know, when we do our analysis, there's an analysis program that the service bureau sent out and you need to use, I can't remember if it's three times the largest diameter of rock in thickness. So if you're using a one inch rock, you need to put at least three inches of rock on the road for it to, to do anything. Because you need a layer of interlock. If you just put a one inch rock down and your equivalent thickness is one inch, you're not interlocking anything. You're setting it on top of something and not, not getting any use out of it other than creating dust. Now, Lori likes that, <laughs> right? But, uh, but we're, not, we're not the only ones dealing with this issue. I'll tell you that. But for 50 years, yeah, it's probably yeah. going to be a battle forever unless we start. It will be a battle forever. Unless we start closing roads and turning them back so we can reduce our miles. But, you know, we do want to have the, the key for me is we want a good hard pan road that gives us good traction, um, little dust. The problem is, the, I think the bigger problem is when it rains, the bases get soft. And a bigger issue is that was 100 years ago, there was never a base put under the roads. We all know that. So it's a losing, it's it's a battle we have every year. I just get rock on these roads so we can keep trying to pound rock into the base and not leave it on top. Yeah, the problem 100 years ago, the equipment wasn't this big. No. Yeah, We've got, well, we weren't putting a million bushels on a on a road with, you know. I had a million bushels. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. And so. I, I hate to bring something up that you have missed here is you talk about washboards. Washboards are usually caused from the traffic and braking. Yep. Washboards are usually, most of the time, a quarter mile or more away from the stop sign. And that's from the public going too fast and braking yep. because they're coming up to that stop sign. But the loose rock is what's washboarding and not really a hard thing. But the public has part of the problem. No, oh, yeah, no, and, and yeah, right. Uh, public's part of the problem when a when a road wheel runs. You know, it's it's the use of the road, and and we just got to maintain. It. I'm not arguing with you guys. I just want to make sure we get we get a gradation 
that we want to put down we get it let out so that we can put it on there we don't have to come back later and say well we should put this down and we want to put that down yeah. i'll quote it both ways yeah Something also to note, you brought, brought it up with Class B roads. Mitchell County has some excellent Class B roads, and it's people people are used to that. But a lot of counties in the state, their Class B roads are nothing like ours. There's grass growing up in the middle of the road. Some of them are dirt. Uh, and some of them have the grass growing in the sides. So a Class B road is simply that. And it, they all say, enter at your own risk. That's ours, you can pretty much enter them because they're rock wonderfully 300 ton a mile is unheard of for a lot of counties to they would well consider that a level b road in other counties is like valley avenue where it's yes a, the road's the bottom of the of the ditch and it's dirt it's a dirt path that's a level b road in every other county mm -hmm. so for us to be put a ton put a mile on a road i think it's pretty expensive <laughs> it I, is. I don't know Maybe. how you turn that around because you, i don't know how you turn that around i don't either yeah. We've been just kind of, and, and in the past, we've just kind of always maintained them that way. But I mean, it's when you look at the tonnage and a perceived amount of what the rock could cost us this year, that's sixty thousand know. dollars. Yeah, most of them up there, as good as the other roads. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. you only know the difference. Yeah, yeah. and you, you go a couple counties west of here on a level B. If there's a hog building site on that, you know, large confinement setup, no snow removal at all. Mm -hmm. So the people that have the hogs out there on that level B road maintain their snow. But, you know, this is, like I said, it's 15 miles of level B roads that, you know, we could put towards the road, but we'll run it this way. I'll quote it two different gradations, three different gradations, actually. And is that in Worth County or further, further over? The Sioux. The Sioux. Oh, yeah, the Sioux. One, one thing that Mitchell County is really fairly lucky. They've always had limestone on their roads. Worth County for years had gravel. This time of year, you drive the roads, and I go quite often for a quarry for Tremio quarry to tell exactly when you hit the county line as far as firmness and, and, uh, and whatever else. No, we've got good quality aggregates here. There's no doubt about that. And another thing, you can go out with a, with a pickaxe or something. You aren't going to go down more than two inches. You're going to get black dirt. We've done that a few times. We have. <laughs> well, the center line of the road, there might be an inch of material there, and maybe the shoulder has an inch and a half. But you think with as much stuff as we put on the roads, we'd have a, a bigger base. But when it breaks down with all the traffic and everything else, you know, when they were built, they probably had a good base. But you keep up with the loaded traffic and, and the amount of traffic, and, you know, you just can't, can't do everything. Okay. So. We'll do it that way. Okay. Anybody have any other questions for Rich? All right. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Item eight, discussion on possible action on Mitchell County Courthouse. Is that you, Dave? Yeah. Okay, just look at the pictures. Yes. Yeah. I went up there this morning probably not two cups of water in the bucket but the wind isn't blowing either so that uh yeah i was really happy when cody said he would i mean at least there's somebody that wants to do it i don't know if you guys are uh, on board with just going ahead and having him do it cody uh, winters with hankel construction came and looked at it he built it he knows more about it than anybody um, it's just a faulty caulk the way it looks, correct? Yes. Yeah. And they got, I mean, if they use some good stuff, it didn't last. That a lot is a long time. story also. They, oh. There was a disagreement about which caulk to use, oh, okay. and they ended up using what the architect demanded to use. Okay. And, you know, we can't turn the clock back. No. But uh, there's better stuff out there now. Yes. 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 And that's what he would use, I understand. We would. Uh, I'm hoping the, the problem is going to be scheduling the lift and him at the same time. I'm hoping he'll take that ball and run with it because I don't know what his schedule is or Nax. We can get Nax lift in here. It's the closest. Um, 
just say do it. Yeah, I can do it. Two weeks on water, you can end up there. Okay. Okay. You can't have rot. Nope. Mm -hmm. But what I've seen it is, and I was uh, surprised that the lift isn't going to cost. That's what worried yeah. me was yeah. what the lift was going to cost, but it's very reasonable. Is so, it? Yeah. Okay. I initially thought Hinkle was going to have to do their lift, so that's why I was confused. And we part. could, but it, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need a motion and a second on this. Move to approve. I'll like this move to approve, and I'll second that. <laughs> Any further discussion on this? Roll call, Todd. Aye. Mark. Okay. Mike. Aye. Steve. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Item nine, discussion and possible action on final plot for subdivision south of St. Anne's Creek. Hi. Hi. Um, last night I hosted um, a zoning commission meeting for them to go over and place their recommendations for the final plot. Um, for the subdivision, um, Stonehill subdivision, Brian Steinberg's. Um, during the meeting, there wasn't a lot of discussion. The final plat you have in front of you, um, it's the same thing as the preliminary plat, it's just condensed. Um, so that's why there wasn't a lot of discussion. Um, but the Zoning Commission did want to mention that, you know, they were definitely in favor of it. Um, they think it's a great idea. Um, the land itself, you know, isn't suitable for farm use. It has a low CSR rating, um, so why not put it to good use and put some houses out there? Um, so everybody placed eyes in recommendation. Um, so I guess I'm just coming to you because you guys are the ones that make the final decision on it. Um, so I don't know if you guys have reviewed that um, since receiving it, but it's... It, the only difference is this one is condensed and it has a final plat sticker on it instead of preliminary. So. I see there's a 412 Street. Is that uh, going to be a county road someday? We just put a moniker on it so that it would coincide if people were actually trying to find it with, with the 911. With the 911 thing, it's between 410th and 420th. So we just put that on so if somebody was trying to Describe where they're at, it would be more. I mean, I know that they've done that in some of the other subdivisions too, try to keep the alphabetical text concurrent and the, and the numerical, you know, just to make things a little bit simpler for people that are out driving around out in the country, I guess. No other real reason for it. No, I'm not trying to make it a county road. That, that did come up in other subdivisions at one time, and they actually want. The question the company to pay for those signs and the decline, so it'd be your responsibility to pay for those signs. Okay. It looks like a good project. I hope it'd be a good, good thing for the whole community, I guess. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, I'll make a motion to approve the subdivision. Mark has made a motion to approve the subdivision. Final plot. Okay. Uh, second. Any other discussion on this? Roll call, Steve. Aye. Todd. Aye. Jim. Aye. Mark. Aye. Mike. Aye. I'll need some signatures. Um, we can do it after the meeting. That's fine. Um, okay. In the subdivision ordinance, um, let me get to it. Um, I'll need something from Rachel. It's like a certification of some sort um, and then I need her signature Mike's signature and then I'll have to sign it too just so that way there's okay. an official document that says that it's approved cool. um, I think you're good to go okay. <laughs> thank you thank you have you got some more yeah. well we're gonna, hopefully the end of the week and now I'm going to start contacting people who have expressed interest in okay. get some ball rolling again yeah, it quits raining. The rain and the cold doesn't help anything. <laughs> no, it does not. No. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Dave. I guess I don't know. Along the same lines, there's an awful lot of housing built in rural Metro County that has certainly increased the tax base of Metro County. 
And if there are any programs available to have to help people build houses, the county's going to come out way ahead in the long run on the tax base. So why not do it? There was one that came across last week, but the board decided not to do it. Well, I mean, not even study it. Nope. But I mean, and I would like to make an appointment with anybody who voted against that to explain to me just why they voted against it. And I mean, it's, they may have a, a good idea, a good reason they did, but I would like to hear it. I'd like to comment on that as well. I would like to agree with Dave. I am very disappointed in three of our supervisors. At this point in the game, you three have asked more questions on paying volunteer voters than you have on a program that could increase our tax base in Mitchell County. I have a developer that was waiting and ready and a landowner who was willing to sell land to a developer. He was waiting to see if this tax abatement program would go through. It's not now. So now that's 15 homes that we could have potentially had in our county, which would increase our tax base. It's a $3,000 investment to get this going. Yes, it does prolong the increased taxes. However, you have to think long term. I'm frustrated because none of you came and talked to me. There were no questions asked. I would have filled this room with supporters had I known that there were questions on it. If you need to hear from your constituents, absolutely, I'll bring them. I really encourage you to bring this back to the table and I will fill this boardroom with supporters. And I encourage you to fill the boardroom with the people that are telling you why we shouldn't do it. And then we can have an open discussion. But right now, this hurt Mitchell County desperately. That's my two cents. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I, it's nice to hear voices, and I encourage anyone listening, come, come to these meetings, please. We need voices, and, and just like you guys do, you need to hear the voices too, because I know that you only hear sometimes some of the negative voices. So we need to start filling the room. That's what we'll do. Along the same lines, the chief's staying here. I've been contacted by somebody from the county that wants to form a group of people to come and be for this and and wants to know from the ones that voted against it why they voted against it because there's going to be another election coming up here someday and people are going to want to know why people are voting the way they are and i mean election of supervisor i just got reminded of the public comment rules it's three minutes you what? I, I got reminded of the public comment rules. It's supposed to be three minutes. So oh, I'm we'll sorry. We'll have to move on, I guess. <laughs> sorry. I mean, that's the rules that come with. Okay. We're up to item 10. Uh, meetings attended. I attended city council meeting last night, and uh, there were things that happened. One of them is a developer that wants to build homes in Osage and uh, the city working with him in order to make that happen, doing things. Um, that's all I had. I had, get the right one first. I had two meetings. First one, North Iowa Regional Emergency Planning District Committee. Uh, all the order, had a quorum, approved the minutes agenda. We had a hazmat report. Uh, Aaron Beamer reported an accident last week and I don't remember what it was with, but anyways, they had to have a fire truck come out there in Franklin County as a rollover. Uh, they had a train derailment March 24th, and then of course we had the tornado. Uh, moving on, uh, we discussed a Roman spectrometer that can tell what is in the chemical container without opening up 
cost eighty five thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, he was going to talk to the commission about it and save time by not having to take samples, opening up the container, taking samples, sending them down three hours away, and then waiting for them to sample it and give them information as to what they got to do. With this unit, they would be able to, on the spot, this is what it is, this is what we got to do. For detecting drugs. That's this is chemicals, <clears throat> not drugs, okay. but it would work with the task force. All right. Others was uh, other brought up was communications and comments on the floor, and it was brought up by Chris Olson or up here at uh, Lyle that uh, Rochester would be able to come across the county or state line, I should say, in case there was an issue over here at the, the ethanol plant. So it would leave Mason City out of it. They'd probably be just as quick from Rochester coming down 90. And uh, we approved the updated request for proposal, updated procurement policy, and we approved the updated bylaws, and we approved the updated LEPC handbook. Moving on after that. Meeting was over with. We had the North Central Regional Emergency Response Commission meeting. Had a forum, approved the last month's minutes and agenda. Uh, had a financial report. Everything is under budget. Everything was ever approved. Unfinished business, it was discussed that uh, the North Central Regional Emergency Planning District Committee meeting and the North Central Regional Emergency Response Commission, they're intertwined. They're two separate meetings, they're intertwined. Some people come to both meetings, others, just come to one meeting. What they're going to do in the future is there'll still be two separate meetings, but they will try and get, well, it is one meeting now, but they're going to have it so that everybody from each one of these organizations will be at both meetings. So it's going to be two separate meetings, but it'll be really one meeting. There'll be two separate meetings, but they want to keep more people in there because I think our second meeting, there was only like four of us in the room and there was a few on the screen on the internet. Anyways, that was my news. Okay, well, I had a few had a substance abuse board meeting, stripping the brochure and they're printing out on this type of one for each of you guys. And kind of go over it has some Thank you. information on it about the county, some of the problems with you know, schools. Substance abuse. So they're planning on plan on creating a bunch of these and getting them out to the community. So make people aware and they're going into the schools and talking to about this stuff. So and then I had a water quality meeting about developing a water quality coordinator for the county. The kind of mill owns kind of spearheading. So there's more discussion on that. And, how it could be funded and stuff, and job description, and so on and so forth. So that's in the planning stages yet, too. I don't want to interrupt. I have a question about that or comment. Yeah, that. that's, that's what I don't want to. Just, yeah. um, before anything like that gets, this, I imagine this board's going to have to approve that. But. Well, it, it's they, they can get some funding from the state, and they're gonna they're gonna set up office out of the ACS okay. office. So, where what I'm concerned about that I know that has come up, and what I'm concerned about that is that they're gonna want money from us, and then we're gonna have a full time person out there doing this job, yeah. and then the uh, grant money and the other funding is gonna dry up, and then they're gonna say, mm -hmm. now you need now you need to pay for the whole thing, and I've got a problem with that. I, I kind of told them that we've already got a budget for this year, and then 
you know, it's a variation. We don't know where it's going. I said, I wouldn't count on this part, you know, as of right now, I don't know. You know, there is maybe another way that that could happen. Um, so, yeah. and not, not by hiring somebody, but I don't really want to get into it yet, but yeah. uh, before it just happens, um, I want us to be able to say yes or no. I don't want to be yes. surprised. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'll. I'm gonna like keep you informed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of suggested something too. To. But, okay. But yeah, it's. Yeah, I don't know. That's. I don't know that. It, <clears throat> it's being a full time position. I don't know that. Is needed. I mean, Agreed. You seem to think so, but I'm maybe not on board with that either. So I'm kind of. Agreed. Thinking like you, I guess. So. Anyways, yeah, put this I'm up. sorry. No, 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 that's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. But uh, that's what we're here for questions. Well, I have a public comments afterwards. Yeah. Okay. And bring it up then. Okay. Okay. And then I, oh, we had a handbook meeting going over the handbook for the county, trying to get that updated. We'll have another meeting here about that. So that was my meetings. I had an Iowa workforce development meeting and we're in with 20 counties uh, finalize their budget. Our unemployment is low all across the island. In every sector, they're still crying for people to come work. Yeah. And then a safety meeting with Mike Rachel. A handbook meeting. Yeah. Yep. Good. Um, I didn't have any, but I did attend the Falk 100 and 100 anniversary, and uh, they put on a pretty good gig there. Thanks, Dave. But uh, they had a really, really good speaker, and Mark was there. I thought he, the speaker did a very good job of uh, talking positivity, being proactive, and Treating your employments and employees and your customers right, dignity, you know. So yeah, he was really good. I thought he was he was a highlight there. So again, thanks for inviting. And that's all I had. I don't be manure management plan updates. There's one for Iowa Select Lift and Finisher Farm, 4845 Kirkwood Avenue, Sidney Then we have item C, clerk of court reports for March. Uh, clerk of court total was $1,781.33. This is March 31st, 2022. So noted. And then we're down to public comment. Just uh, I will follow up on or just quickly say e yeah. email, I think. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are more expert on this than me. And you know, Lindsay does all the payroll, right? She might even know more than me. But uh, but my well, it looks to me like uh, when it comes to employee uh, pre-tax deduction for that wellness program. That, that that does not qualify. Does qualify. Now, I, and what was going on in my mind is, I you know, I was thinking about, well, like fringe benefits. And so I, I there, there are two different things. For example, it looks to me like, for example, if, um, if the county, for example, said, you know what, uh, we, we, we want to uh, include this, you know, separately from anybody's pay. We want to include this, you know, to the employees on top of their pay. You know, the, the, the county might be able to deduct that, right? Then it wouldn't necessarily be taxable to the employee, right? That's kind of different, I think, than what we're talking about. We're talking about deducting from an employee. And it looked, looked to me like that would not uh, qualify. There's a little looking at things like retirement plans, medical and health insurance, things like that do. I think daycare assistance, you know, things like that. It doesn't look to me like that, uh, that would. So, um, Thank you. Just yeah. follow up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Uh, yes. Moving on. Looking for a 
Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Didn't make motion to adjourn. And second. Do the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Vote. Meeting adjourned. Aye.